So, calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers. What the heck do they do? Calcium channel blockers do exactly what they sound like. They block calcium channels. Okay? That's what I wanted to add. Calcium channel blockers. Okay, so for cardiac glycosides, your DIG, uh, one of the biggest questions on like nursing tests is your patient sees halos or like green halos. Uh, that's a huge DIG toxicity question, okay? So they're always popping up on cardiac tests. So be sure to watch out for that and monitoring potassium, especially if your patient is a heart failure patient on Lasix or furosemide or another loop diuretic that wastes potassium. Good test questions right there. Okay, so calcium channel blockers. These guys block calcium from getting into your vascular um, system. So in your um, veins, okay? In your veins, there are channels that the cells, basically your cells have channels on them. And I need to do a video all about how your cell is really like a city. And how there's city gates, there's a city hall called the nucleus, there's bills and, um, and laws that are put into practice called your DNA and your RNA. And they get sent out through the post office of your cell, which is just your Golgi apparatus. And there's power plants in the cell itself, like your mitochondria that produce ATP, that, that power for the cell. As well as lysosomes that really are just the trash men of the cell that act like Lysol. Oh man, I have so much fun with the cell. <laughs> but um, these city gates to, these, to the cells of your body, um, they have channels. And when channels open, they let things in, okay? So these calcium channels, obviously, let calcium in. Now why is it bad to have calcium inside your cells? Well, it's not bad at all. It's only bad if you have hypertension. Because calcium, calcium in and of itself is an electrolyte. And these electrolytes cause electrical excitability. Yeah, excitedness, right? So a lot of excitement, a lot of, um, how would you say, um, I don't know. Um, what am I trying to say? Constriction, we can say. A lot of spasming, we can say. So, calcium channels, they block, calcium channel blockers block the channels to cause less spasms inside these cells, less activity. So what does this make, how do we make it all make sense in terms of your hypertension patient? I like to remember calcium channel blockers in terms of calcium. Calcium, you know, the, the calcium in your bone. What makes your bones hard? We can say it's the calcium deposits, okay? So you guys do not want to have hard blood vessels, no? You don't want to have a hard heart, right? Because if your heart is really hard, there's going to be increased pressure pushing on those vessels. So, we block the calcium, soften up those vessels, don't make it hard, and bring down that hypertension. Soften things up. Make it more flexible, right? Tell that calcium, be blocked, my son. Get out of here, right? So, calcium channel blockers are not forceful. They don't cause any force on the heart. They do create, decrease the rate of contraction, so they're negative chronotropic. So they're causing less cardiac output. Basically, how much blood is coming out of the heart. They're causing that decrease in cardiac output. 
and they are stopping your arterial spasms. So they're softening up things, okay? You don't want to have hard vessels, like bone vessels. Because think of calcium, main calcium deposits are in your bones. You don't want to have hard, hard vessels, right? Doesn't make sense. So let's block that calcium, soften things up, man. And um, that it's going to decrease these atrial spasms. Um, vasodilation occurs and we're gonna have a block of calcium blocking that hardness softening things up so is it dromotropic on the AV node level my notes say it's not so we're really decreasing the rate in terms of how much output how much electrical excitability from that SA node, but directly the mechanism of action is on those vascular beds themselves, your vessels. We're blocking those, ves um, those electrolytes from getting in. We're making that heart soft. Just relax. That make sense? So, here's a critical thinking question before we go on to the next um, dopamine but a critical thinking question for you is how would calcium channel blockers affect your EKG reading think about that one well hypercalcemia would cause you to have sluggish ST waves fancy words for your heart is becoming very hard and not relaxing. So I don't know if you've seen any of my videos about uh, EKG, but uh, I teach the EKG course down here at uh, a college in Southern California, uh, in Whittier actually, and we talk about how the P, S, and the T waves, and the QRS, and all that fun stuff, um, and I break it down very simply for you guys. So if you haven't seen that one, you should probably see it. But too much calcium would cause too much constriction, not enough relaxation. So you might have these what's called sluggish uh, or um, too much um, ST contractions. So you're not going to have a good plump um, T wave. You're not going to have that repolarization. You'll probably, maybe, you'll have a uh, ST elevation. Or, like in hyperkalemia, you have too much contraction, ah, you'll have an ST elevation as well. Doesn't mean your patient's having a heart attack. It's not a STEMI. Just means that um, you have too much calcium. So that's why we do all these blood tests, and we do an EKG, and we draw the cardiac enzymes, just to make sure your patient is not having an MI. If I just went like way over your head, that I'm sorry, but <laughs> um, there's a lot of videos here for me to help you out. So, as long as we're learning, right? Little steps.